There are no letters behind my name, amen? No qualifications. I'm just a person here on the internet talking about things as I figure it out. Hey everyone, it's me, Halise, endeavoring to persevere. As always, if you're new here, I make videos about my chaotic good life. Subscribe, follow, social media, all the things. Today's video is a much requested one, to hole or not to hole when it comes to growing plants in semi-hydro or semi-hydroponics or passive hydro or LECA or whatever word <laughs> you use where you're talking about growing plants and not in soil. And so you'll see different people who do semi-hydro stuff. Some of them will do this, so they'll have, or some variation of this, I guess. They'll have a nursery pot or a actual uh, LECA pot, which has a lot of different slits in it so the water can really work through. And then they'll have a filler pot underneath to catch the water and hold it in there for the plant or they'll do this, some variation of this, where they have some kind of container and they drill a hole in it. And that's what they do. There are a lot of different ways to grow plants in LECA. And so in this video, I'm gonna talk about why some people maybe do the hole, why some people don't. And so you can kind of figure it out for yourself. But before we get into this all the way, a quick side quest and then I'll be back. I wanna make sure that you're registered to vote. Have you registered? Are you doing your due diligence? I have put a link in the description box. The first link is where you can go to check and make sure you are registered to vote. Make sure everything is correct. You on your P's and Q's. There's nothing they can say deny you your civil rights as an American citizen, okay? Be a Virgo for like two minutes and just make sure, just make sure. You're planning on voting by mail or doing absentee ballot or just voting early. I'm definitely gonna vote early just to get it over, get it done. Make sure you're actually registered to do that. Make sure you're actually registered to vote by mail or do an absentee ballot. That's different than being registered to vote. It's a two part thing. Part one, you need to be registered just to do it, just to practice that civil liberty and vote. Part two, you need to be registered to do an absentee ballot or to vote by mail. So the second link in my description box is to help you do that if that is something that you're trying to do for this election season. Also, make sure you're eligible in the state that you're in to do an absentee ballot or to vote by mail. I know for me personally here in Texas, I'm actually not eligible to do it. I know this time is very frustrating, I know <laughs> It's hard right now, like I, I know. <laughs> but you know, this is one of the few things you can do to have any kind of say in what is happening in your life. This is one of the few civil liberties that you can practice as an American citizen. So for better or worse, this is what you can do. <laughs> you know, this is, this is it. So I just wanna make sure that you have checked to make sure you're registered and everything's correct. And if you are planning to vote in a different way to make sure you're registered to do that too. So have a plan in place so that way you can do it. And uh, I'm done, I'm done. Let's get into this video. <laughs> but go vote, please. <laughs> hey y'all, welcome back. So the simplest reason why I like to drill the hole in plants is so that you have an easy way to drain the water out of the plant. Whenever you go to water the plant, like so, it's just going to come out the bottom. And this is really great for a few reasons. One, you don't end up over watering the plant. There's no way you can because if you drill the hole where you're supposed to, the water will only be able to go up but so high. The other way this is really great is if you ever wanna drain the plant, it's a lot easier. You just literally kinda of hold it and you know, you very easily have now drained all of the water out of your plant. That can be really helpful, especially if you have a bigger plant like this one in LECA. Um, you, it would be great to have a hole in this so that way you can drain it out really easily and you're not trying to dump and pour, especially if you're not trying to get to the roots or anything like that. That's the main reason that I like holes <laughs> in my planting containers. In general, I am an overwaterer. That's just the type of plant person I am. I'm really bad about overwatering. So I really enjoy having the hole because it really helps. Another thing I really enjoy with planting plants like this is 
the clear container. That helps me to not even mess with the plant that much because I can actually look at it and inspect the roots and not worry at all if I'm overwatering it or anything like that. So I don't even really need to touch the plants. I can just kind of glance over and see, oh, the water's kind of low. I'm gonna fill it up. And then the hole prevents me from overfilling it up. Some tips are on around having the hole is that you wanna make sure the hole is about a third of the way up whatever container you're going to use. And then also that you position the plant's roots around halfway up the container. So that way, if the plant is not used to being in a water environment, it gives the plant time to naturally get used to that and grow into the water. Um, and that also helps to prevent things like root rot as well. Um, if y'all have been watching a few of my plant videos so far, y'all know I've had a stent where just like root rot is the thing that I am struggling with right now. <laughs> it is not fun, but here we are trying, you know? But that will really help to um, prevent root rot and just help your plant have a more balanced experience. Now again, I prefer having holes in whatever containers I'm using. And I also prefer clear containers like this so I can see the roots, but you you don't have to do that and in fact this plant right here it's in a clear container but I don't have a hole in it because I got kind of lazy and didn't feel like drilling the hole in it so I've just been kind of eyeballing it with this one to make sure that I don't overwater it and thankfully it hasn't been an issue at all so that's good but you can also just have a plant in a filler pot like I said using whatever container, maybe you just use a nursery pot. That's what this is. I think I poked a couple extra holes in it, but it's a nursery pot. And then this is Chobani yogurt that I just saved the container upcycle and put it inside of there. And now it'll catch all the runoff. So with this method, when you water it, it's great because you water it. And as you can see, see if I can do it high enough for y'all. You water it and there you go. It's the runoff is there and you have your filler pot to catch the runoff and now the water can just sit and live in there. Now that's way too much water to have in this plant. I need to like literally take that back out. But <laughs> um, that is something you can do. And I personally don't, in fact with this one I'm just doing that. I personally don't like doing this method for a few reasons. One, I can't see the roots. <laughs> I don't like that. I really want to be able to see the roots um, as they begin to grow so I can just quickly eyeball and see if root rot's setting in or just something else is setting in, maybe algae or you know, water bugs, whatever. I just wanna be able to see things quickly. Control freak. <laughs> so I don't like having plants in containers where I can't see them. But at the same time, I did start to notice as I was switching plants to LECA that I had a lot of you know, filler pots based out of my recycling that I could just use and so that's why I do this now. The other thing I've noticed from having plants in clear containers, glass containers versus, with holes versus having plants in filler pots and containers, makeshift filler pots, is that you also start to run this issue of like, I don't know if it's more oxygen getting in, like there just isn't enough as much airflow or if it's just the sun itself, you know, whatever type of um, indirect light you have doesn't really get there, you know, because it's literally covered. And I'll notice sometimes that I really have to be good about not overwatering or when I lift the pot up out, um, I can smell it's like kind of rotted. Like the water's just been stagnant and sitting in there for so long that it just kind of smells a little bit and I have to refresh and revamp and it's a whole thing. And so something that I do now, if I am gonna use a filler pot when I'm taking care of plants in LECA is I actually don't let any water sit. So what I'll do is I'll literally water the plant like this over the sink um, or with nutrient water, but I'll water the plant like this. I will let the water run off as much as possible, like so, and then I'll put it in the filler pot. And there's still probably a little bit of water that will slowly make its way down, 
but that's it. And I just let it stay like that. And the thing about this is I have to come over and check and see, okay, and wait for it to get completely, completely dried out um, to know that it's good again to do this process. So this process is a little more time intensive for me and the plants that I have. I haven't really figured out a good way to have plants in this method and be really like super hands off um, the way I want to be with plants like these where I can literally just eyeball them and see that they need water and they're fine. Again, depending on what type of environment you live in, what plants you have, I think one may work for some over the other. Um, just, it's all trial and error. That's what all of this is. It's just a lot of trial and error all the time. Now, how to drill the hole. I'm gonna do a semi demonstration because I don't feel like drilling any holes right now. Sorry, y'all. Let me not talk and make noise on the, with the thing at the same time not do that, right? In the description box, I include everything I use when planting using LECA, using this system. Make sure you check it out. The diamond bit I use, which is in the description box, in kit, is here. I use this bit to drill holes. And a few tips on drilling a hole into whatever glass or plastic container you're gonna use. Um, all you need is a hand drill for this, nothing too epic. So you want to start drilling from a diagonal kind of, like come at it, come at it a little sideways, you know what I'm saying, a little sideways. And then as you finally pretty much get it locked into place, start to go more perpendicular with how you're drilling. Because the thing about it is, is glass is like moving around and stuff and you just really need to, you know, focus in and try to like leverage as much as you can whenever you're drilling. The other thing I will say too is to keep cold water nearby. So the method you wanna use is drill some to kind of get it going, then pour some cold water onto whatever section you're, you're drilling. So that way it stays cool because heat is not your friend when doing this. If you let the glass or the diamond bit get too hot, you'll just crack it and break it all the way through and you're screwed. So you wanna keep some cold, water nearby so that you can slowly keep pouring it on there to get rid of the glass debris and also to make sure that your glass or plastic, well, plastic won't split, it's whatever, but make sure your glass doesn't crack and split and break. The other thing I would recommend is, if, especially if you're doing glass, but you know, just be careful if you're doing plastic inside, but be careful if you're doing glass and I would recommend taking it outside to drill um, just because, again, you are gonna be drilling a hole in glass and you don't want you know, micro glass shards to end up all over your apartment, your home floor. I mean, yeah, you can vacuum it up, but there's still glass, you know, protect your toes, you know what I'm saying? Protect your toes at all costs. I personally gather a lot of glass containers and then I actually usually go to my parents' house <laughs> because my dad, uh, is very mechanically inclined and he has a standing drill press and I use that usually to do like five or six of them in a row so that way I don't have to worry about getting glass all over my apartment. I will also link to a few other great tutorials that I actually watched to learn how to drill a hole correctly um, to make sure that I minimized cracking the glass too much or anything like that. For example, with this one, as you can see, I did a pretty good job drilling the hole in this one, but there was a bit of a, you know, there's still a bit of a crack. It didn't crack enough to mess it up. Bertoli, as you can see, is thriving, but it did crack a little bit. And this was like my first attempt at drilling. And I did this one in my apartment, sitting here on a chair, drilling, it was a mess. You know, you live, you learn. You don't do that again. So with all of that, if you are new to LECA, let me know in the comments below. Are you planning on drilling or not drilling holes? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know in the comments of how your semi-hydroponics experience is going. Again, I am Halis, and if you're new here, consider subscribing. Big shout out to my Patreon production team, patreon.com slash Halise. There you get early access to these videos as well as private weekly vlogs from me. It is a good time. A lot of y'all have commented on the excellent production value of my videos and that is all because of my patreon producers so thank you so much guys I really appreciate y'all again I'm Halise and I will see you when I see you